what is the difference between a weak and a strong acid, as well as the corresponding Ka value for that acid called the acid dissociation constant, or it's also sometimes called the acid ionization constant, and you will probably be asked to write an equilibrium expression for that Ka uh, acid dissociation or ionization constant. Let's get started with strong acids first though. So what makes something be a strong acid? Well, we'll model it first and then we will draw out the reaction and list some facts about strong acids as well as list the six strong acids. So this is hydrochloric acid and what happens is when it comes in contact with water molecules, it'll dissociate completely and we'll do that with every single hydrochloric acid molecule and then it'll ionize a water molecule turning it into hydronium. And every available hydrochloric acid molecule will dissociate into a chloride and a hydrogen. The hydrogen then will be bonded to this lone pair on the water molecule and it'll turn into hydronium. And you will make 100%, you'll see this in your books, 100% ionization, or some people will say 100% dissociation. So let's write this chemical change together and then let's list some facts about strong acids as well as the six strong acids. So hydrochloric acid is one of the strong acids and when it comes in contact with water, we have a one-way arrow, it's a complete ionization. So let me just keep a hydrochloric acid molecule and a water molecule here and then I'll just keep one of each of these and I'll get these off of the screen here. So then it makes all chloride ions and hydronium ions, all right? Now why it has a one-way arrow is because this is a strong acid and it makes a weak, this chloride ion is a weak conjugate base, in fact, a very weak conjugate base. And so there's no reverse reaction back to reactants, which will be different when we get to weak acids. All right, so now let's just list some facts about strong acids and let's list the strong acids, the six of them, all right? So let's just get started here and list some facts about our strong acids. So again, strong acids have 100% ionization of water, ionization of water. You could also say that 100% dissociation, that they break into ions and then they ionize the water. They will be strong electrolytes. That's kind of how you can prove electrolytes. That's how you can prove kind of with a lab, um, you know, technique that they are uh, strong acids, okay? Next, what else? They create, this is really important, they create a weaker, in fact, really weak, a weaker conjugate, conjugate, base uh, um, pair, okay? Remember the conjugate acid base pairs from a previous video. The last thing is a lot of times we don't really write the equilibrium expression and we just say the Ka is greater than one and it's large. So here are your strong acids. Most people agree there are uh, six of them. So HCl, HBr, HI, okay? Those are kind of from the halogens. And then nitric acid, which is HNO3, and perchloric acid, and one more that is diprotic, which is sulfuric acid. So there's your list of your most common six strong acids, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. All right, so let's move on then to weak acids. So what are weak acids? So I'm gonna do is uh, kind of keep this right here, okay? They will make hydronium, okay, but let's go over a model of it first. We're going to use HF. Do you notice that that was not um, on the list of, got to grab my water molecules back and deprotonate them here. That was not on the list of strong ones. I'm just going to grab a few water molecules here. Uh, we'll just grab one more, see if we can get that one on the frame here. So what are we going to write down? So we'll have HF instead. And then it'll have a double arrow, and I'll model it with you, okay? And it'll have fluoride ions as product, as the conjugate pair, the conjugate base to this weak acid. And this will have a double arrow. And here's what happens. Maybe only one 
of the set that I have here uh, ionizes water. And so a lot of times we'll say that these partially ionize water or they're partially dissociating. So most of the HF right here is still like molecular and the waters are not all protonated like before. And you have double arrows showing that this does have a reversible reaction coming back. The other thing that's really important here is you have the opposite setup here. So here's my acid. That one once just wants to leave, which is fine. It can leave. And here's my conjugate base. And my acid is actually weaker this time. And my conjugate base is stronger. Now, how I know that, and that's why we're going to write the Ka value for this one, is the reverse reaction is more prevalent. And the Ka value for these, you'll see in a table, are very small. Okay? All right, so let's write some facts down about our weak acids. Okay, get all these off of here. Got a little hydrogen ion that wants to get in the mix here. All right, so let me grab another sheet so we can write some facts about the weak acids, okay? Now, if it isn't a strong acid, then it's a weak acid, okay? So kind of know your strong acids, and then everything else is going to be then a weak acid, um, if it's going to have the ability to protonate water like that. All right, so these are called partially or partial ionization. You might also see partial dissociation. They are weak electrolytes. You could kind of test that in lab. So weak electrolytes. They create kind of the, everything's kind of the opposite. I don't know if you noticed that. They create a kind of a stronger, I don't want to say strong, but stronger conjugate base. And again, if you haven't watched the video on my conjugate acid base pairs, that would help. And they have Ka values and they are less than one. And they're typically, you're gonna find a table in your book that's gonna list the Ka values for your weak acids. So what I'm gonna do is actually write the Ka value for our HF. So you might see something like this. This is called the acid dissociation constant or ionization constant. But what I'm writing right now, right now, without the new number, I'm not gonna worry about the numbers in this video, I'm gonna be writing the equilibrium expression right now. And what I do is I take my products, the concentration of my products, it's the same thing as regular chemical equilibrium. And then in the denominator, I don't put water because it's a pure liquid, and then I have HF. So you put your concentrations in here, and typically then your numerator here is quite small and your denominator is quite large in concentration, which is why it has a less than one. For a strong acid, you have just the opposite. You have all ions on, you know, in the, in the numerator and no uh, molecular acid left. Now, you might see this as kind of a generic formula for any weak acid. So don't be shocked if you see this. It's just a possible way for us to have any weak acid. So HA, A can be kind of any anion that's bonded to the hydrogen. Or they might not write the water in there. And you can have either one of these. They're both synonymous. And you'll actually see that when we do pH calculations that hydrogen ion or hydronium ion are kind of used the, the same. And the more HA, or sorry, the more A minus and H plus and kind of the less HA, the larger the Ka is, and then you can say that that's the stronger of the acids, or maybe it's so large that you can just say it is a strong acid. All right, well, I hope this helped you understand how to classify an acid as weak or strong, and hopefully if you need some help, you can watch the video on conjugate acid-base pairs because that's really important for this. I'm just going to add these back in. Here was my little you know, list for strong acids, memorize these, I'm telling you, save yourself a lot of heartache and memorize these strong acids. And then the weak acids are anything else, and then they partially ionize, uh, and then they're weak electrolytes. All right, good luck, chemists.